The swimming baths, or swimming pools, aboard the Olympic-class ships are not often discussed in detail, aside from the fact that they were, in fact, present and a very new feature on board ship. The swimming bath was located down on F-deck, immediately starboard of the number 5 boiler casing, making it fairly far forward. It was right up against the starboard side of the hull, as indicated by the portholes which helped light the compartment. The swimming bath itself occupied a little less than half of the total size of the compartment. It was 33 feet long by 14 feet wide, and the depth varied across its length. Forward, the depth of the bath was 7 feet 6 inches, and aft, the depth was 8 feet 4 inches. But the bath was never filled this high. Instead, it was filled to a level such that the depth was 4 feet 6 inches forward and 5 feet 4 inches aft. This allowed for an even three feet between the water plane and the top of the bath to accommodate the sloshing of water within the bath due to the ship's movement. As it turned out, three feet was not enough, and the swimming bath was quite affected by the rolling and pitching of the ship, particularly the rolling due to its not being on center line. Luckily, a system of gutters and grates were implemented around the edges of the swimming bath to funnel excess water from off the deck but the deck itself would have remained wet in most sea conditions. The construction of the swimming bath, plates and rivets, was made flush to accommodate the finishing. The bath was finished with elongated blue and white ceramic tiles of 7 inches in length on the bottom and sides. There was a set of stairs on both the forward and after ends of the swimming bath. On Olympic, these were originally of marble with teak treads, which proved to be too slippery and were later replaced. As for the water itself, this was salt water fed into the pool from the ship's water main via the hot salt water tank located on the boat deck, and cold salt water fed into the pool from a different pipe. The flow of water was controlled by way of two valves, seen here in this photograph, clearly visible and accessible to the passengers. This water sloshed around so much that it caused safety issues, especially in the context of the springboards located on either end of the swimming bath. As the ship pitched up and down, the depth at the forward and after end of the bath varied greatly, and a person jumping into the bath by way of the springboard might have found that the depth at that particular moment far too shallow for safe entry, and would hit the tile bottom quite hard. Because of this, the springboards aboard Olympic were removed during rough weather conditions, and were eventually removed permanently. They were never installed on Titanic or Britannic. The depth of the bath laterally was perhaps even worse because of the swimming bath's location. It was on the starboard side of the ship, thus exacerbating the effect of a rolling ship since it was not on centerline. This is why swimming pools are generally installed along the centerline of a ship, to minimize the effect of rolling at sea. The compartment in which the swimming bath was located was very bare on both Olympic and Titanic. Steel plates, rivets, piping, and other structural features of the ship were clearly visible. In addition to the 13 dressing rooms along the inboard bulkhead of the compartment were two shower stalls, which were the only features of the entire compartment which were finally decorated, a seemingly odd choice. It included ornate tiles on the inside. The swimming bath compartment was spruced up quite a bit aboard the third ship of the Olympic class, Britannic. But this extra care went to waste as Britannic never saw commercial service, having been requisitioned as a hospital ship during the First World War and sinking during that duty. The swimming bath was available to all first-class passengers free of charge in the mornings, with separate designated times for men and women. If a passenger had paid for a ticket to the Turkish baths, access to the swimming bath, conveniently located immediately forward of the Turkish baths, was included. Otherwise, access to the swimming bath in the afternoon was a 25-cent fee, payable at the inquiry office. <laughs>